Hey everyone, welcome back to Single Length School. I'm Craig, and we're gonna cover a cool tip for you guys to help save some strokes out on the course this week. So if you're new to the channel, or you've been here before but haven't yet done so, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button down below, hit the notifications bell right beside it so you know when we release a new video. Also, follow us on social media, at Single Length School over on Facebook and Instagram, at One Length School over on Twitter. You can always shoot me an email, singlelengthschool at gmail.com, or go check out the website, singlelengthschool.com. We've got lesson packages you guys can purchase. We've also got a cool section called Our Partners. Go check out the Our Partners page. There's some cool links there that'll get you over to some great sites that'll get you some good golf gear by clicking on those sites and buying from those sites. You'll actually help fund Single Length School and help me keep doing what I'm doing. So this week's tip, you know, I, I get a lot of questions. I, I hear from a lot of people and I've done this tip before, but I think it's a good time to revisit it, is, you know, some guys, a lot of guys, I do it, pros do it, find themselves in trouble. And when I mean in trouble, I mean under a tree where you can't really hit a full shot out because it's gonna hit branches that are up above you. You feel like you almost have no choice but to chip the ball out, but not necessarily true. Unless you're in a really bad situation where you do have no other options but to chip it, there's a chance you can actually punch the ball out, move it down the fairway towards the green, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the first things first, A, I'm on the range, of course is a little bit busy. I'd like to be out under a tree to do this, but not gonna happen today. So when you're trying to move a ball down the fairway and keep it under a tree, there's a couple things you wanna do. A, Never, I don't care if you only have 30 yards of net limbs in your way, never do you want to take a wedge. You don't want to take a pitching wedge, you don't want to take a sand, a 60, any of those wedges. You want to keep something with a little less loft. So in this case, I've actually got my seven iron. Sometimes if the branches are a little higher, I can get away with an eight or a nine iron, but that's it. And of course, if I'm really far out, a couple hundred yards out, 200 yards out or so, I'll take a five iron and I'll run it down there but the swing is gonna be the same no matter what we do. So let's take a look at what we should do to set up for a solid punch shot that's gonna help get you down the course, get some extra yardage, and not have you chipping out into the fairway. So first things first, as I said, I've got my seven iron, and we're gonna say this is a 150 yard punch shot. There's a little flag up here on the driving range. I will move you guys back here to kind of see the flight, but there's a 150 yard flag out there. That's my target. So for your setup for your punch shot, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your normal setup, but you're gonna put that ball position way back in your stance, sometimes just inside your back foot, sometimes even, even with the middle of your back foot. That's your ball position. That way you can hit down on it, keep it low, really de-loft the club as it's coming out. The next thing you wanna do is focus on your backswing. Your backswing with a punch shot, you're not gonna be taking a full backswing. You won't. And even if you have 200 yards to go, it's gonna be the same type of backswing. The only time the backswing differs is if you've got a little less distance to go. So with your backswing, what you're gonna do is you're only gonna come about halfway back. That's it, you don't need to go further than halfway back. And same thing, when you come through, you're keeping it low, you're keeping your hands low, you're trying to keep everything from going above your hips. You don't want the club going above your hips. The second it goes above your hips, you're gonna get the ball up into the branches. So, if we take a quick peek, and I'll give you guys this face on view first, I've got the ball back in my stance, I'm taking my normal stance, get down on the club, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push my weight forward. I wanna make sure my hip gets on, or my weight gets on my front hip here. So once I do that, then I'm gonna grip the club regularly, and as I said, half back swing and a half follow through. And essentially what I just did is I hit in the center of the ball. The ball really never got above six, seven feet off the ground. 
hit around 75, 80 yards, and it kept running. That's what's gonna happen. These balls are going to roll. So you have to keep that in mind. You don't wanna take, if you've got 150 yards and that's normally your pitching wedge, you're not gonna take your pitching wedge. Obviously, we've already talked about that. But you don't wanna go with a five iron because your five iron is gonna keep rolling. So this is something you really need to practice. So let's take a look again. Ball back in my stance, weight forward, and we're just gonna take that little half swing. And that one was a little higher, probably no more than 10 feet off the ground, but it's gonna keep me under the branches because it didn't get to 10 feet off the ground until it was 50, 60 yards down. So that keeps it low, will keep you under the branches. Now let's take a look from the rear. All right, guys, here we are with the facing out into the fairway so you guys can kind of see the ball flight here, um, understand this a little bit. But again, let's walk through our steps. Ball back in our stance. We're gonna move those hips forward. And again, I have seven iron here. <clears throat> and we're only gonna take a little half swing and try and keep those hands from following the whole way through. And that one was a little higher, but it still wasn't more than maybe 15, 20 feet off the ground, which when we're looking to get under branches, that's perfect, especially when the branches are right here within 10 yards of us. Keeping it under that six foot mark is perfect. So I'm gonna give you guys another one. Again, the seven iron. If you can see it out there, there's a little flag out there in the middle. That's about 150. So that's where I'm trying to get this to, trying to keep it low. Weight forward. And that's a pretty good shot. It was about five yards to the right of target. Now that's a seven iron. So again, it's gonna go, but it's gonna kind of dive out there. Let's take a look and see what we can do with the five iron and see how the trajectory is gonna change. And then I'll show you the nine iron as well so you can see how that comes out a little higher. All right guys, so this is the five iron. This one's gonna hit the ground a little bit sooner because it's not gonna get up in the air, but it's gonna roll a lot more than what that seven iron did. So ball position, just by the back foot, weight forward, and we're gonna take that half a swing. And as you can see, that rolled to the top of the hill up there. It landed somewhere around where the seven iron was, but we got more roll. So one more here with the five iron. Again, back foot, weight forward, and just that little half swing and half follow through. Not quite as good, but it's still out there, still out from under the trees, still down there where we can get a little bit closer to the hole instead of chipping out from under the trees. All right, guys, last one here. We've got the nine iron. We're gonna do the same thing, same setup. This one's gonna come out higher than our seven did, higher than our five did. Same setup inside the back foot. And again, it came out. That ball carried about 140 and stopped a little bit faster. Same thing with this one. And that one's where I expected it, about 135. So guys, that's how you hit the punch shot. I hope this helps you guys, help you guys get out of the trees and instead of chipping out, head down the fairway. So again, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below, hit the notifications bell right beside it. Over on social media, it's at Single Length School on Facebook and Instagram. Twitter, it's at One Length School. SingleLengthSchool.com. Go check out the links on our partners. Help support the page. If you want some in-person lessons, hit the packages. And what we'll do is we'll do a Skype or a Zoom lesson so you, can get, you guys can get lessons with me that way. And if you want to shoot me an email, SingleLengthSchool at gmail.com. So until next week, guys, keep it in the fairways and have a great week.